welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today's show is episode number 650 and is the 14th of a series of all pre-recorded shows due to the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak, and therefore there is no question of the day. However, station management has said that I can go back in the building and do live shows starting July 12th. Okay, so today's show with me will be, just like last week, Dustin McKee. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him in a minute, but he is the executive director of a charity called Make a Day. And I discovered that through my follow-up interview that we really just scratched the surface last week. And so I invited him back for us to uh, go a little deeper into what the Make a Day Foundation does. Before we get started, though, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about Dustin McKee. For the past 16 years, Dustin has served marginalized populations in the Midwest and spearheaded major legislative advocacy initiatives with the Ohio General Assembly and Congress. Prior to taking over the helm of the Make-A-Day Foundation, Dustin served as the policy director for the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Ohio. Prior to his work with Make-A-Day and NAMI, Dustin served in legislative and policy positions advocating for issues impacting children as well as those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Prior to his focus on public policy advocacy work, Dustin served in direct practice roles serving people with intellectual, developmental, and behavioral health-related disabilities. Dustin has a bachelor's degree in psychology from the Earlham College and a master's of social work from Ohio University. All right, folks, so as I mentioned, we have with us again Dustin McKee. He is the executive director of Make-A-Day, correct, Dustin, uh, executive director? Yeah, the, the Make-A-Day Foundation. I'm the executive director. Okay. I'm, I'm the one full-time guy we've got. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't look out over a room of people in their study corrals that you can you that work for you. You're you're it. Just our volunteers and our interns. <laughs> okay, okay. So you might remember that uh, we had uh, uh, Dustin on the show back when we did uh, show six forty nine, and we talked about Make a Day and the fact that they have a pop up event coming and it uh, benefits the homeless and the homeless will receive a meal. They'll receive if they want, of course, a haircut, shampoo and haircut. They will have be given uh, new clothes if they need or want them. And uh, let me think, what else did you tell me they would get? Did I miss anything? Well, personal care items. Oh, that's uh, and, and then the food truck fare that our friends from Street Time provide. Street Times. Uh, street Times spelled yeah. T-H-Y-M-E. Yes. A play on, food truck. Uh -huh. a play on the words there, on uh, a play on herbs. <laughs> yeah. And we also have a partnership with the Short North Piece of Cake Bakery. Piece of and, Cake. And uh, they bring their wonderful baked goods out. Sometimes our friends at the Rock Free Pizzeria bring their pizza out. Shout out to Paolo, who you may have met through uh, Cafe Napolitana or a Rock Free Pizzeria. And yeah, it's just provides an opportunity and a space for people to meet on equal footing. And our guests who sometimes happen to be homeless are just simply Jane Smith or, or, or Tom Jones, as it were, and not a homeless person per se. Right. Um, they're just folks to be able to, to talk to and, and to uh, meet with uh, other folks in the neighborhood. Okay. Sounds really neat. So if you're giving them clothes and you mentioned that anywhere like underwear and bras and things like that, that people really need. I remember Ted Williams telling me that one of the biggest needs he had as a homeless person was warm, dry socks and underwear. Absolutely. 
absolutely. And Ted knows what it's like for those things to be in short supply. And uh, we hear the same thing from our guests as well. Okay. So you must have to have all different sizes because you don't know who's going to come and what size they'll wear. And so do you have this whole supply and then hopefully there's enough for everybody to pick the size they need. And then you keep that in storage till the next, next one. Or how do you do that? Yeah, we get so many donations. It's, it's amazing when you do clothing drives. Sometimes you get more clothes than you can even anticipate. So we always have plenty of different sizes for folks, and our volunteers help our guests find the sizes that they need. And one of the things that Ted probably didn't mention, because he's a guy, is women who are homeless often face is the lack of feminine hygiene supplies. Oh, um, yeah. And so we uh, give a, a shout out to our friends from I Support the Girls, which is another nonprofit. They provide us with feminine hygiene supplies that are put into the personal care item toolkits that we provide. And also in coordination with another charity that we work with called The Dude Charity. And for any of those fans of the Big Lebowski movie, Dude Charity is sort of an ode to the dude from the Big Lebowski. Oh, okay, very cool. So now where do you get your funding? Or from where do you get your funding? If I want to be grammatically correct. It's all private donations and organizational donations. And we allow organizations and sometimes private folks to sponsor our events. And we have the ability for folks to sponsor our advocacy, which is one thing that, uh, as I came on, was able to expand our work in that. Right now, we're working with Franklin County to provide smart justice resources at our events, but also to help enhance the work they're doing for people who are discharged from jail to get them connected to health, behavioral health, community and social services resources, as well as peer supporters and community health workers to get people the things that they need to move forward in their journey. So that was... Um, so jail discharge planning is one of the pieces of advocacy that we also are able to get people to sponsor our advocacy, but also um, sponsor our events. Okay. And that was one of the aspects that we just had a chance to touch on last show. We really didn't get to delve into the fact that a lot of these folks, they have some kind of a record. Sometimes it's a misdemeanor. Sometimes it's more. And it's very hard for them to move on with their life until they can get that straightened out, correct? Absolutely. You know, when you have a warrant, an outstanding warrant over your head, it creates a sort of an underground sort of bunker mentality where people want to hide in their bunker and not necessarily get picked up because they don't want to go to jail. And maybe they have an outstanding warrant for a disorderly conduct or public intoxication or a low level offense. And what it does is it makes them go underground and it prevents them from being able to, or feeling like they're able to as well, access certain resources, whether it's health services or mental health services, um, or substance use disorder services. You know, a lot of the folks that we see who are homeless have either been through uh, significant trauma in their lifetime, which can present mental health symptoms, and sometimes they have a serious mental illness. could be untreated mental illness, like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder or major depressive disorder. Sometimes they have substance use disorders, whether it's dependence on alcohol or opiates or methamphetamine. Sometimes they have all three of those things. And when they're part of the criminal justice system or they're avoiding the criminal justice system, it's often difficult for them to be able to access the resources and trust people enough to move forward in their journey and get the support that they need. Right. And the people that have those conditions, oftentimes they don't know they have those conditions. They think they're normal. Am I right? That's absolutely right. You know, in in my previous role, I worked for the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and there is a fancy medical term called anastignosia, which really just means lack of insight. So a person who has, uh, say, schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder sometimes is the last to know that they have a brain disorder. And it's just one of those characteristics of that brain disease that the brain isn't able to recognize that it's malfunctioning. And it can be similar with people with substance use disorders. Sometimes they're the last to come to the realization that they have a substance use disorder and they lack that insight until life circumstances sort of corner them into a situation where they start to get educated or they make the decision to reach out for some support in recovering from those kinds 
Right, now I noticed you're calling it substance use disorder rather than substance abuse disorder. Tell me about the, uh, the nuance. So substance use disorder is an umbrella term for a group of conditions which, like mental illness, have been highly stigmatized over the years. For the longest time, we didn't have the brain research and understanding that we do now to help us to understand how, in fact, the brain was actually malfunctioning. And so it got into discussions when people talked about substance abuse. People got into discussions about whether or not this was a personal choice for individuals. And if they chose not to use substances in a moderate way, that's the reasons why they develop a substance use disorder. But now we understand it's not necessarily always the result of the overuse of a substance, which is sometimes referred to as abuse. It's uh, both the frequency of the use and the intensity of the use, as well as genetic characteristics that can make somebody more predisposed to developing an inability to regulate their intake of certain chemical substances. Okay. So when we talk about substance use disorders, what we want to do is remove that stigma for people so that they think of substance use disorders and mental illness to that standpoint as a brain disorder, just like we would think of diabetes as a disorder of the pancreas right. and other types of organ systems. Okay. No, I, I think that's really neat. We are up against a break. You can hang with me, correct? Absolutely. Okay, because there are a lot more questions that I have, and I'm sure you have a lot more to tell me. One of the things I want to talk about when we return is um, if somebody comes upon a homeless person um, uh, panhandling or standing at the exit ramp, should they give them money? And some of the similar topics like that. All right, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 650, and we'll be right back. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. There's nothing else in the world tonight She said people don't take the time Hey, people don't take the time Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Guess what? We're open and here to take care of all of your dental needs. It's been a long time coming, but in the words of Governor DeWine, it's full steam ahead. During the time we were closed, we were acquiring PPE. We were developing a plan to keep you safe. We've had Zoom meetings, a very active text string, and in addition to going into the office to take care of emergencies, we've been in complete contact with each other, so we'd be ready. Are you ready? We bet your teeth and gums are. Don't forget, your teeth haven't been cleaning themselves. Your cavity haven't been getting any smaller and your gum disease hasn't been healing itself and if you haven't had x-rays in a while or an exam there could be a lot of things going on in there that you're not aware of because let's face it cavities don't hurt even abscesses don't hurt until they get really bad call us at 614-262-9588 that's 614-262-9588 or go to drkvitko.com that's d-r-k-v-i-t-k-o.com Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko, let's go! Yeah! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavitko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavitko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavitko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, we're back. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for hanging in there. Thanks for listening. With me is Dustin McKee of Make a Day Foundation. 
He is the executive director. I think it sounds like he is the chief cook and bottle washer, correct? <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you, <Doug>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I mentioned before the break, I wanted to get your take on giving money to a homeless person. And let me just preface it by saying that having worked with Ted Williams, and for those of you that maybe don't remember, Ted Williams had that deep voice and he was discovered by a dispatch reporter. Let's see, Chenoweth was his last name. What was his first name? I can't remember the uh, reporter. Do you remember it? Not at the moment. Not okay. at the moment. Something Chenoweth. And he went up to Ted with his camera rolling and he said, so here's a dollar. I want you to earn your money. Go ahead and read this. He had something written on a piece of paper and Ted read it and he, he was just blown away by that voice that he had. Anyway, yeah. so getting to know Ted and uh, uh, learning a little bit about the plight of the homeless, I was told, and I forget by whom, it might have been, I know that C. Ted was on Dr. Phil and I spoke to some of those um, counselors down at the Origins Recovery Center in uh, South Padre Island, Texas, where he was treated. Yeah. And But one of the things I learned from that whole episode was I was told if you have a homeless person asking for money, you're better off to buy them a meal because sometimes they'll take the money and they'll buy drugs. Now, I don't know that you agree with that, but I will tell you that that, is, that notion is out there. What, what would you say? Yeah, I think that's a personal choice for folks. I tend towards avoiding cash donations for folks. For the same um, reasons. Yeah, same reason. Yeah. Yeah, similar reasons. And I have given, you know, small amounts of money before, you know, substance use disorder is something that is something that is enabled by various things. I'm not usually too concerned that I'm going to be the one that keeps that person using substances. But at the same time, I feel the most important thing for people to do is to get to know the people okay. uh, that are in those circumstances. And if you can get to know the person's name, you know, that's a great thing. And, and sometimes that's easier instead of just giving them some spare change and walking on by, you can say, hey, I want to bring you a sandwich or a cup of coffee. And that provides an opportunity to break bread with the person, as it were, and start to get to know that and, and that person as a human being and really see them as, as more than just a person who's homeless. Right. So let's use Ted as an example, because I really did get to know him. I spent a lot of time with him, not just doing dentistry, but at his birthday party and at his place and just talking. And, and we were out in mm -hmm. L.A. together. And, you know, Ted is dynamic. He ha is, can be charming. And he seems intelligent, he's well-read, well-spoken, and yet he was homeless for, I think it was 17 years living there by the Hudson Avenue exit ramp of I-71 South by Mopre Stadium. Yeah. And what I learned about Ted, and it's, I can mention it because he's already mentioned it on, the, on TV, that he's bipolar. And yeah. he also doesn't like taking his medicine because it makes him feel funny, he said. So yeah. he'd rather not feel funny, so then he... When he's not on his medicine, he has little, they're not little all the time, actually, little temper tantrums and things, you know, and he'd be the first to yeah. admit it. And, and so it's a challenge for some of these folks to be able to be normal. And so I might be answering my own question here, but I'll also tell you, and I'm not the only one that has um, said this, but in talking about homelessness with other people, especially when we, before COVID-19, and the yeah. economy was just on fire, right? And employers couldn't even find enough employees. They're begging for employees. So when you come to yeah. the end, end of an exit ramp and there's what looks like an able-bodied uh, man standing there yeah. uh, with a sign that says, I'm homeless, I'm hungry, or you know, implying they need money, you yeah. just wonder why don't they go to work for Amazon? Yeah. Or if not Amazon, some other, some other employer. There are lots of them out there that are hiring. And even today, there are lots that are hiring. Kroger? Meyer, that sort of thing. And yes, well, yeah. what would your answer be? You know, uh, when you're talking about a person's uh, reasons that they become homeless, there's lots of things that uh, the naked eye can't necessarily see. I'm not sure who made the quote, but something like, uh, be kind to the people that you see in this world because they are struggling with something that you may not have any understanding of at all. We all have circumstances in our lives that have been very difficult. And oftentimes people who are homeless have been exposed to very extreme circumstances that can lead to significant, significant trauma. In the mental health world, we're learning more and more about how trauma impacts a person and their functioning in life. There's also structural factors that are at play that, you know, it's a little bit too complicated to get into now. 
But there's also one of the things that, that is related to those structural factors is our broken mental health system. We had a system in this country for, for many years from the 19th century through the 20th century that was a system of inpatient mental health hospitals that used to be called mental health asylum and things like that that were really started by Dorothea Dick and her advocacy in the 19th century. And they provided opportunities for long-term mental health care for people with serious mental health disorders like bipolar disorder, which at that time was known as uh, manic depression or schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. Over the years, those institutions became more and more crowded, and there were a lot of concerns about the care in those institutions. And there was a movement towards deinstitutionalization. And it really started with the Mental Health Act in the 1960s that the JFK signed and, and led to the creation of community mental health systems that were really supposed to replace that institutional system and provide opportunities in the community for people to receive the care they needed. Now, by and large, that's worked for folks who have moderate to mild mental health conditions that can kind of take themselves to their psychotherapist appointment, get themselves to a psychologist or if they need medications, a psychiatrist. But for those folks who have the most serious mental illnesses like schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder or bipolar disorder, it doesn't work that well. And so we've seen since we've closed those state hospitals, which they were often called because they were paid for by each state, we've seen an increase in homelessness. And in Ohio, those state hospitals started to reduce their census starting in the 1980s. And then to the extent now we don't have that many hospital beds available for folks for more than a few days treatment at a time. And so often somebody will become stabilized to the extent that they're judged not a threat to themselves or others. And then they'll be released right back into the same situation, oftentimes homelessness, which makes it very difficult for them to get into the pipeline of treatment services and for them to get stable. Right. Because it's, it's already hard enough for a person who has a stable home life and a family to treat their, their say, schizophrenia. And if you're living on the street, it can make it very difficult. So the yeah. influence of trauma, untreated mental illness, untreated substance use disorder, and other structural factors can really create a perfect storm of circumstances for people to end up homeless for a short or even a long period of time. Right, and therefore not a good candidate to work for one of the local logistics companies or something because, first of all, they maybe can't get there and they they don't have their medicine or they, they go in and out of what we might consider a normal behavior and so they wouldn't last. Would you agree with that? Yes, and some of the mental health disorders have sort of a relapsing and remitting cycle. So sometimes a person with bipolar disorder will have a stable mood for a long time and can do really well and maybe they stop taking their medication for various reasons, maybe side effects, maybe lack of insight. And then even if they're on medication, sometimes it can happen, they can have a relapse of those symptoms. And wow. that can make it very difficult for a person to maintain stable employment. So we need to go to a break. And when we come back, I have just a few more questions. We actually are almost out of time, so we'll probably be wrapping it up pretty soon. But you can hang with me, right? Yeah, thanks, Doc. Okay, hang in there. Thanks, folks, for thanks. listening. Um, this is Dr. Kavitko, and we'll be right back. You can't take me as I am Die just a little bit I don't know who to be I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea I know you see it too Cause you're too much for me This is Clark Kellogg Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko Aquí en su sesión favorita Hi, I'm Dominique Reiger Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model, and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. 
grandpa. And I go to Dr. Convicto and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? Okay, we're back, and this is The Reasons We Smile. With me is Dustin McKee, and as I mentioned before the break, we're almost out of time. Uh, Dustin, what's your college degree in? I have a, a bachelor's degree in psychology, and I have a master's degree in social work with a focus on public policy and uh, administration. Wow. Well, that's kind of what I would have expected, but <laughs> it's pretty cool. You get paid to make people's day. How cool is that? We're living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's a lot of work, but I bet it's very rewarding. It really is. You know, one of the things that I enjoy about my job is the ability to give back to the community and to help advocate for people who don't necessarily voice or feel that they have a voice in their community. And it makes it worth the hard work for sure. Awesome. Well, the world needs a lot more people like you. I want to congratulate you on what you do and thank you for what you do and encourage you to keep doing it <laughs> because you guys are thank doing you, awesome Dr. things. We want to thank you for being one of the helpers in the world. I don't know of uh, really any other dentists who have put in the personal resources and time that you have, uh, you know, with, with dental care being the number one um, unmet health need. I don't know of any other individuals who have put in the, their personal time and resources to help meet that need. And that's why we're excited to have you as a partner at our Make a Day event so that we can hopefully make somebody's day. I know that when, when people don't have oral health pain, it can be a real relief. Oh, yeah. There's nothing worse than a toothache. I, I can tell you from uh, experiencing it in others. And I've actually even had one of my own toothaches where I wound up needing a root canal. So it is, it's terrible. And it makes me tell you what, it's one of the most favorite part of my jobs is when I can take care of somebody's pain. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, you just see them go from this, they're just grimacing and they're, they're, they don't seem like a very nice person at that moment. But the minute I get them numb, it's this wonderful person blossoms. It's really neat. <laughs> but anyway, and, and I think... It really is amazing. Yeah, it really is. We have to thank the people um, who developed that anesthetic for one. And it was, uh, let's see, Dr. Horace Wells, 19, or 1846. All right. <laughs> Give them a shout out, right? <laughs> well, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, when, when we take that approach, that if, if we're able to help relieve some of the pain that people experience, just like other living organisms, people will blossom right before our eyes. When, as one of my favorites says, Dr. Carl Rogers says, we provide the necessary and sufficient conditions for positive human growth. And certainly oral health care is that, and uh, certainly social connectedness is one of those necessary and sufficient conditions. Absolutely. Well said. So thank you so much for being my guest. I really appreciate it. And maybe what we'll do, we'll have to see. We'll see how it goes at the pop-up and see if potentially we could, uh, maybe I'll bring my recorder and we could capture some of the comments from the people that have attended and maybe uh, received either a haircut or food or dental care or all three. Hey, that sounds wonderful. Doc, I'm ecstatic to have had the opportunity to speak to you today on your show and, and to continue to partner with you moving forward. Sounds good to me, Dustin. All right. Well, you have a great day and thank you, you very too. much. Thank awesome. You. Thank you very much, Doc. You're welcome. Well, looks like that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Before we go, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kivitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 614- 
262-9588 or send an email to speak.